Hey, what's up on this video? We're gonna be sharing with you the 10 tips to avoid gaining weight during the holidays. It's the holiday season. Da 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 na 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 na. Okay, so Sarit and I both came up with five ideas each for you that will help you navigate the holidays, all the events, all of the temptations, all of the cookies that your neighbor made and brought to your house when you specifically said, I'm trying not to eat cookies, Karen. <laughs> Karen's gonna get mad, whoever's Karen's watching this. No offense, Karen. Um, Julie, Sarah, Brittany, those are, those are all the names that I grew up with in my era. I think Sarah was the most popular, actually. Everybody's name was actually Sarah or Rachel. Really? Those were like all my... Two biblical names. All of my... Strong. Grade school and high school. It's the Sarah and Rachel era that I grew up in. Anyways, um, on another note, we're going to share with you back and forth. I'm going to go. Sarit's going to go. Um, and we're just going to give you our, our tips for the holidays. Usually it's the time of year where uh, we like to indulge a bit more than usual. And sometimes we just say, fuck it. I'll start on January 1st. And our goal and our attempt here is to help you feel like you have set yourself up for success going into the new year rather than feeling like, oh my gosh, I've just gained all this weight and now I've got to start over. So let's get into it. What's your first one? Okay, my first one is stick to your regular routine. Look, just because it is the holiday season, that doesn't mean that you throw off your routine because listen, your routine is like the thing that keeps everything, you know, in check. So let's say if you have a particular routine and then let's say come, you know, like, the week after thanksgiving you just fall off that routine guaranteed that you're going to fall off everything so let's say you know if within your routine you know it, it let's say you wake up at 6 a.m and you go to the gym for like one hour listen even if you've got you know holiday parties you know other you know maybe christmas shopping whatever holiday obligations you got you know stick to your routine what that will do by default is it will give you a certain boundary of this is what time i need to be in bed at so you know uh, most people normally start falling off simply because they do not stick to their routine and then they you know they start to slack on their workout and you know after you slack on your workout and let's say you know like linda at the office brings you know uh, pumpkin a, donuts pumpkin donuts <laughs> or whatever it may be and everybody's like oh come on like just have one right it starts with one bite but basically you know what a, one of our mentors says if you don't have always you're going to end up with nevers and your routine is kind of like your your always box so you know i'm not saying that you shouldn't harmonize uh your you know some of the holiday festivities if that is what you like but what i'm saying is a surefire way to help you to continue running on momentum during the season is by making sure that you are sticking to your routine whatever that may look like okay your first i love one. the word festivities i was thinking that and i was like should i say it and then you said it and it was amazing festivities this is a fun word to say also yes it's a slippery slope and if you catch yourself you miss one thing, that should be a trigger for you that's like, all right, I gotta make sure I do the next part of my routine. I gotta do the next part of my routine because it is a slippery slope. Um, yes, okay, so my first one is uh, eating before you go to an event. If you don't know what's gonna be there or if you know that the food that's gonna be offered there is food that is out of alignment for what your goals are or what you wanna do. Now, this is not to say don't indulge during the holidays. This is not to say avoid everything that is fun for you. What I mean to say by this is don't be mindless about your eating. Don't go somewhere without a plan. And so when you eat beforehand, if you know that the food there's not going to be in alignment, like way out of alignment, maybe there's going to, you're, you're like, Hey, I'm going to allow myself to have one thing there. Great. But if you eat beforehand, and you are not hungry going into it, then you're not gonna feel 
like you are having to fight yourself so much to avoid eating the food that you know is going to make you feel like garbage or make you feel guilty about yourself the next day. Usually when we feel guilty for eating something, it's because we didn't have an intention to eat that thing and we did anyways. It's more of a matter of we didn't stick to our word. So if you eat before you go to the event, then you will be less tempted and less likely to indulge in things that you did not plan on indulging in. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. My second one is this one is in particular with regards to like the more festive meals or, you know, not the regular, you know, like lunch on a Monday morning or not like the big old turkeys and hams and biscuits and gravy and mashed potatoes and yeah green like bean the casserole. holiday parties or like the Stuffing. you know like thanksgiving dinner or whatever it pumpkin be. pie so no matter what make it a point to start your meal with veggies and here's why because veggies are what we call a positive filler number one it fills you up because it's you know loaded with fiber number two it is loaded with nutrients okay so no matter what you're gonna have beyond that point if you were to like stop right there at least you've done your body good because you you gave it the fiber and you gave it the nutrients that it needs so that it functions more optimally aside from the fact that if you start your meal with veggies you're going to get you know fuller with the veggies which means that even if you were to just have pumpkin pie afterwards <laughs> you by default will end up having less pumpkin pie than you would have normally because you would be a little bit more full so that way you're gonna save yourself a little bit of those extra processed sugars and calories and you're gonna give your body more of what it needs and no matter what you're gonna do beyond eating the veggies it's going to allow your body to reset itself sooner rather than later. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So do you mean to say that I should start my Thanksgiving dinner with the sweet potato marshmallow mash? Is that what you mean? Because sweet potatoes are a vegetable. <laughs> I want to make sure y'all don't get it twisted. Vegetables are vegetables, and candy is candy. Yeah. Sometimes. Candy yams or creamed broccoli don't mean vegetables. We mean like, <laughs> you know, some roasted solid. Brussels sprouts, some salad, you know, some things solid like vegetables. that. Yeah. All right. My second one is when you are going to an event, offer to bring something. So that in the case that there's not a lot of things there that you feel like you'd feel good about eating, you at least know you can bring something that not only will you feel good about eating, but you've now provided an opportunity for other people to have something that's a little healthier to eat. Because Lord knows that most of the things brought to these events, unless you have a lot of very healthy friends are usually on the more indulgence kind of side, even if it is including vegetables. Even if you have healthy friends, even, <laughs> most people this time of year, let me tell you something, they'll find a way to go the extra mile to give themselves a little extra. Some, some. Treat. So yeah, offer to bring something. My, my second one is offer to bring something to the event. Not yeah. only is it cool and like generous and giving other people opportunity to eat something that's healthy, but it guarantees that you know there's going to be something there that you'll enjoy eating that you won't feel bad about. Mm -hmm. Number three. Okay. Wait, so, this is number five technically, but Sarit's number three. Yeah. So after, you know, you filled up on your veggies, what you want to focus on is the protein, okay? Because again, listen, it is a lot easier to get full on protein aside from the fact that protein is basically the building blocks for your body. And no matter what, you should do your very best to have a, ser uh, a serving of protein with every single meal. So even if 
you were to literally just have desserts for the rest of the day at least you've already you know you've got your nutrients in you got your building blocks in and you're like you know what i give my body what it needs and if i want to shit on it <laughs> beyond that like at least you gave your body what it needs so you know like you're doing your body good okay two things why are you chewing on a fingernail what is this <laughs> Are you using your fingernail as dental floss? No. Okay, no, hold on. I'm just, I'm just, um. You're just folding it like a paper origami. It's okay, cool. Uh, second thing, this is how you eat all the time. Fun fact about Sarit. Yes, this is how This I is eat the all order the of Sarit's nutrients. <laughs> I take my. Micronutrients, veggies, protein, carbs, fats. Well, That's the order you eat your food. No, 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 no. Listen, Chipotle. You like push the meat. It, it is. It Hold is. On. It depends though, because like in our salads, we we mix our carbs in there. We're like. Hold on. This is funny, because it's true. This this is ninety percent <laughs> of the time, unless it's a salad, which has like. But do you like be real? Like, do you like save some of the apples and pistachios like for the last bites? In our once at home no because it's mixed so good but like when we go to a restaurant i'll tell you I'll she eat does all she the pushes, veggies first she and pushes the treats finish, aside and then i'll push the treats aside right and then because, she'll eat them yeah because i gotta no, no. earn that shit yeah <laughs> chipotle you like will eat you like push some of the meat aside you'll push like uh -huh. the guacamole uh -huh. put it last yeah and so even go, when we go to like a restaurant i'll eat all the veggies first and then like it'll just be like meat chicken She'll eat the whole salad. She'll be like, I would like to add a double portion of chicken. And then when she's eating the salad, it's like, then she has a bowl. You look over like five minutes later and there's just a bowl of chicken. Yeah. Listen, the, the tips that I give you are the things that I implement in my own life. It's like, um, I was going to say there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, but that doesn't really apply because you're telling them a specific way to eat, eat a, food. Eat a Reese's plant first and then eat a Reese's <laughs> protein and then... First eat the eat, Reese's tree. And then have the Reese's. Uh, and then the Reese's pieces. Yes. All right. Anyways, uh, so going back to that was uh, after the veggies, eat the protein. Okay. Yes. Recap. Uh, my third one is offer to host the entire event. This is not my particular. If you're not a Martha Stewart. This is not my particular um, go-to for myself personally. However, it is an option for those of you who are, you know, like hosts by nature. We you do like do have that, a million dishes like in your cupboard. Like my mom, that like uh, a 360 days out of the year, like she doesn't need them, but like the five days out of the year, she does then you know offer to host uh if you are like rock and paper plates i mean you can still offer to host probably that'd be great because then nobody has to do any dishes um just have to buy a couple more paper plates but that is one way what's the reason i'm trying to be funny we I'm, host like all the time i'm being funny about this but you know what that does is allows you to be in control of the food that's offered allows you to be in control of what's going on and even at that point like a host usually people are willing to bring things hey what do you need me to bring what do you need me to bring you're like hey especially if you got good friends here's this recipe boom <laughs> can you make it yeah you know um so yeah that's my third one offer to host okay. why are you laughing at me you are giving away my how do i keep myself occupied during a YouTube video. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was funny, and I was like, she won't care. No, oh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, so the next one is this now. Listen, Listen Linda. Linda. Okay, if you like to get festive on the holidays, chances are is that you like to have a drink or two or maybe five mm. and regardless of how many drinks you like to have I challenge you to have either a club soda or a water after every drink and the reason for that is because the more alcohol you have I don't care what your tolerance is 
the more your cognitive functioning drops, you know, as you keep on drinking. So basically what you do by that is you, you know, your decision making skills, you, you basically allow yourself to have less alcoholic beverages in a certain period of time. And, you know, that allows you to enjoy your drinks, limit any, you know, unnecessary calories between you and I, like alcohol is a non-essential, you know, macronutrient. So really other than the festivities of it, um, your body, pumpkin cider, your body doesn't need it, but yeah, man, like pumpkin cider, that shit is so good. And you know what? It's got alcohol, it's got sugar, whatever. So, you know, you dilute it a little bit by having some club soda or water, whatever it may be after every serving that way you end up by default drinking just a little bit less alcohol so that, you know, you end up putting more of the good, good in your body. You know, what's also cool about that is that you are, it's almost a feeling of like, I've earned this next drink too, you know, and then, and then you don't feel as bad about it. Yeah. You know, you're, tell- you're like, Hey, I've drank this thing of water. I've earned my, if you start with a thing of water, you're like, as soon as I finish this, I get to have a drink. You're motivated now. You're like, boom, as soon as I finish this, I'm gonna have a drink, boom. And then not only do you consume less alcohol by default, cause you've got less time and less room in your stomach. Right. But you also, for one, you feel more excited about that drink. You enjoy that drink more mm-hmm. and you feel like you earned it. Yeah. So it's almost like satisfying. Like I won this drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So what's yours? Number four for me. Um, so this would be number eight. Okay. Before going to a festivity, mm-hmm. a holiday festivity. Holiday um, festivity. Before going, write down your intentions, like literally, like write it down physically on a piece of paper write down what your intentions are, uh, what you are or are not going to indulge in. I prefer just to say what I will allow myself to do, um, not what I don't want to do. And then you give that, even a text, okay? Send it to a friend, but not just any friend. Send it to a friend who's a real friend. Send it to a friend who will give you brutal accountability. Send it to a friend who will call you out on your shit if you don't stick to it. Send it to a friend who will follow up with you and ask you, how'd the party go last night? Did you stick to your intentions? And give yourself some kind of like, well, I would say I'm not a fan of consequences, but I really am because consequences make you learn, right? Um, I don't know about, I don't know about you, but I got little whoopings when I was a kid and I'll tell you what, I learned things. It was beneficial for me. So if you have some kind of a consequence and I would encourage that it not be a workout as a consequence, um, but, but something else, um, maybe you have to give your friend 50 bucks if you fuck up. Donate to charity. Yeah. I mean, I don't think donating to a charity is a consequence, but like, I don't know, maybe you it's, give it's your friend. It's a good cause consequence. It's yeah, at least, true. Um, true. You know, I'm helping to the greater good. True. Or you could give $50 to your best friend and they can go buy some stuff um, like tutus and like bunny ears and things and say uh, that you have to wear those on the next uh, Saturday morning jog. <laughs> some people might find that entertaining. But, um, yeah, write down what your intentions are, if at the least, even if you don't give them to somebody, because it makes you more likely to follow through with it because you wrote it down, like you actually put it out there. Um, give it to a friend who will actually hold you accountable um, and, and make a consequence if you don't stick to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the last one for me is give yourself a weekly allotment for the number of desserts you're going to have. Okay, and the reason why I say we... That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Mine were great. Well, In the comments, drop, drop 
And let us know. This is just going to be a friendly competition. Because Great. I know Aaron would like it. Whose tips did you like more, Sarit's or Aaron's? Anyways, um, <laughs> you can pick a fa- you can pick a favorite. Nobody's going to take offense. Yeah, no. Somebody. The truth it. is that people will benefit from both, yeah. and everybody's different. Yeah, yeah. It, actually, let but us mine know are better. Which out of like the entire list, like which one you're like, oh yeah, I'm definitely taking that one. Um, would love to know which one you know you'd find most beneficial. So give yourself. A weekly allotment for desserts. And why weekly allotment? Because let's face it, if you are going to have desserts during the holiday, you're going to have more than just one dessert a week. And by giving yourself a weekly allotment, this is me just keeping it real with you, this gives you a variety to choose from. So you're really harmonizing the strictness of it. Listen. If you want to excel in life, you have to be strict. You have to create rules. You have to have regulations. You can't just have a free-for-all. It's called discipline. Right. Otherwise, there's chaos, right? Um, But it also gives you that, you know, um, room for error so that, let's say, if you're like, okay, my weekly allotment is, let's say, three cookies. And, you know, let's say you already had one and you're into third day of the week and you planned on having the next two let's say three days from now but then there was an opportunity for you to have something super special that way you're able to create a what i call a fair negotiation with yourself not to in a sense of like oh my god this is special oh my god this is special it's like no once you passed your weekly allotment done it's gotta gotta be worth it it's gotta be worth it right like you gotta wait till next week however let's say if there is something unexpected and you still got like room in the bank then you know you're free to make a pivot if you'd like that way you're able to you know create continue to create more of that um spontaneous factor while at the same time remain disciplined so weekly allotment you know you get to choose what is something reasonable and give yourself a number that you can stick to like with full faith where if i was to ask you on a scale of one to ten how ready able and willing are you to follow through with it you tell me like a 10 with flying colors okay and make it a point to like tally it up and hold yourself accountable to that. And, you know, once you hit that, you know, weekly allotment, cool. Cool. So you're able to pace yourself as well. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that was my last one. What All about right. you? All right. Number 10. Avoid unnecessary temptations. Mm, good one. So what I mean by this is... Let's say there's an event or a party or whatever, and you're just going out of obligation because like, oh, my best friend asked me to go, but like, I'm not going to know anybody there, but you know, there's going to be a bunch of garbage food there that you're going to be tempted around. Just don't go. You don't have to go to something out of obligation. If you don't want to be somewhere, you don't want to be somewhere. Chances are you're not going to be the life of the party there anyways, because you don't want to be there. So if you can just avoid, or if you know, there's like, Susie brought her like famous peanut butter fudge and it's sitting in the break room. Like, don't go to the break room. Like, don't put yourself in unnecessary positions to be tempted to eat things that you're not planning to eat. That's number 10. Yeah. So there you have it. We hope that these 10 tips help you to you know keep the fun with your holiday while at the same time get ahead with your goals so that going into january you don't feel like a bag of shit because let's be honest nobody likes that feeling okay so this is about you making the most out of the holiday season and keeping it festive you know if food and drinks is one of the way that you keep the holiday festivity. We totally get it. Um, you know, this is about you harmonizing your goals with the seasons of the year so that you don't have to go 
crash and fall and crash and fall and you know you're able to go smooth and steady and then you can like you know even pick up the speed going into january rather try to sprint from like a full stop nobody likes that not even your car i have a bonus one Ooh. this one is gonna win because it was the bonus unexpected and i just thought of it so like in the comments like this is the winner right um okay so at any rate if you have friends that typically host and like you always attend or like your mom or like somebody send them this video so that they can do the same things and then you don't have to try as hard genius winner genius winner all right or send them this podcast however you are consuming this hopefully this was helpful for you if it was please hit the like button so that we know that it was helpful for you um and yeah, duh, like let us know whose uh, tips were your favorite or just which tip you heard where you're like, oh my God, that's genius. And I could totally see where I can use it here and here and here. Thanks. We'd love to know. Um, and if you like this channel and you just vibe, then subscribe. If you, you like that, if you vibe, then subscribe. I love it. I love it. And you know, I, I really hope that you do share it with your mom with your cousins with your friends and make this a discussion around the dinner table you know whenever you're having your holiday festivities like ooh, which steps are you implementing today like <laughs> man that would be such a productive conversation absolutely and if you do plan on having it or maybe you did have that on your holiday table uh drop at hashtag es army strong and here's to you being ENS Army Strong 365. Happy holidays. Catch you later.